The transition elements topic in A-level chemistry is incredibly varied. It's got loads of diagrams, colors, and equations you need to memorize. In this video, I'm going to give you a summary of the content and signpost you to loads of stuff along the way to help you make the most of your time ahead of those final exams. Kicking off with a definition of transition elements, they're a d-block element with at least one stable ion with an incomplete d-subshell. For example, iron has got iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus ions, which as you can see here from these electron configurations, have got those incomplete d-subshells. Not all elements in the d-block are classified as transition elements. As part of the OCRA A-level in chemistry, you need to be aware that scandium and zinc are not currently classified as transition elements. And that's because their only stable ions, that's scandium 3 plus and zinc 2 plus, do not actually have incomplete d-subshells, as you can see from the configurations shown on screen. There are also two anomalies with the d-block transition element electron configurations, and these are for chromium and copper. You may expect chromium would actually end in 4s2 3d4, and that copper would actually end in 4s2 3d9, but they are 4s1 3d5 and 4s1 3d10, respectively. Like I said before, there's lots of colors you need to be aware of as well. This is a little snippet of some copper complex ions and structures that have different colors and different states, all part of that big long list of them that you need to learn in time for your exams. This is actually a snippet taken from the OCR aqueous ion summary table that I'll put a link to in the video description. And I've got some great videos which are just linked at the top at the moment that'll take you through loads of different reactions using this grid once you've got that downloaded. We also need to be aware that for the transition elements, their elements and compounds, not just the elements themselves, actually have catalytic properties. Here are three I recommend you learn. First off, we've got the copper 2 ion in the reaction of zinc and sulfuric acid. Then we've got nickel in organic chemistry being used as a catalyst for the hydrogenation of alkenes and for nitriles. Don't forget the nitriles in module 6. And then third off here, we've got manganese 4-dioxide, which is used as the catalyst in the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide to form water and oxygen gas. You may have actually done that practical in your practical endorsement work because it's one of the recommended continuous monitoring methods. Moving on, and we're going to talk about transition elements and complex ions. And we need to make sure that we can use all of the vocab in this list effectively in order to answer those longer exam questions. Around the outside of the complex ion structure, we have ligands. Now, ligands are molecules or ions which donate a pair of electrons to form a coordinate bond with a transition element ion. And you may recognize the coordinate bond as a dative covalent bond, which is how it was described and can still be described now, but it's just don't be surprised to see coordinate bond used in this context instead of dative covalent in textbooks, mark schemes, exam questions, and so on. At the very core of things, like I said, there's a transition element ion. Now here, this particular one has an octahedral shape around it, and that means that it's got a coordination number of six. The coordination number describes the number of coordinate bonds to the transition element ion at the center of the complex ion structure. If this was a tetrahedral complex ion, then we would say the coordination number was four, for example. Moving on, and we draw these in the same way that we drew octahedral in module two. Don't forget the two wedges that describe the bonds coming towards us and the hash lines that describe those going away. We've also got a charge here outside of some square brackets. The charge on the outside of the square brackets is the sum of all of the charges inside the square brackets, and we don't show any charges inside the square brackets. Here, for instance, each chloride ligand has a negative one charge, and there are six of them. Since outside the square brackets, we've got a two minus charge, that means the platinum must be plus four. Now, so far, we've only talked about monodentate ligands, really, and I've shown them as part of that structure that we had on screen a few moments ago. Let's have a look at some alternative monodentate ligands before we move on to ligands of a different style. First off here, we've got ammonia, that's a very common monodentate ligand, and the familiar chloride ion that we were looking at in the previous structure. We can also have water as a common monodentate ligand, and then perhaps slightly less common, but definitely more familiar from organic chemistry, we've got the cyanide ion just here. 
As alternatives to monodentate ligands, we can actually have something called a bidentate ligand. Now, a bidentate ligand has got a slightly expanded definition. Here, we have a molecule or molecular ion which is going to donate two lone pairs of electrons to form two coordinate bonds per molecule to a transition element ion. And as you can see from the structure of this ethane 1,2-diamine, a very common bidentate ligand, it's the nitrogens here in this structure, and each one of them is going to form its own coordinate bond. Think of them as like crabs with claws, and those claws are latching on to the transition element ion at the core of the complex ion structure. Another very common bidentate ligand is ethane dioate. This time, we've actually got two negatively charged oxygens within the structure that are each going to donate a lone pair of electrons to each form a coordinate bond to the transition element ion. Now, let's have a look at a combination of these things together, because we can mix and match the use of monodentate and bidentate ligands. I've taken off the hydrogens for this molecule for a little bit of clarity, just so they're not cluttering up what we can see. Here, what we've got is a combination of the ethane 1,2-diamine ligands, and we've got two water ligands as well. You can see the formula in the top left-hand corner. Now, the way that I've chosen to position the two water ligands actually gives this molecule an extra bit of a descriptor. We can describe this molecule as a trans stereoisomer. Because when we've got the ratio of ligands, as we can see here, two bidentate of one type and two monodentate of a different, here we can see trans is used as a descriptor to describe the positioning of the two water ligands. Let's say I was to move them 90 degrees apart, well, that actually would be a different stereoisomer that, again, you may recognize from alkene chemistry in Module 4. This one can be described as cis. And here we've got the two of the same ligand 90 degrees apart. Can we take things a step further? We normally can with A-level chemistry. And so here what we've got is an example of the cis isomer having something that's referred to as optical isomerism. Well, with the optical isomer, we have the cis structure drawn out, as you can see on the left, and then a non-superimposable mirror image of that cis stereoisomer drawn across a mirror line, creating the optical isomer. This doesn't happen for the trans structure in the combination we were looking at before. It's got to be the cis isomer when I've got two bidentate ligands of one style and two monodentates of another. So what to watch next? Well, you might want to delve into that stereoisomerism in a little bit more detail. So there's a video on screen right now that you can click on and go straight through into more examples of that. Or you might want to look at all that color chemistry and those reaction equations using the summary sheet. Don't forget to follow the links as well at the top in the cards as they could take you on to something that you never knew you needed to revise and might come up as the very first question in your paper. Until next time though, happy revising.